Hello, my friends. If you're trying to become a better instructional designer or land new instructional design opportunities, then knowing how to create an instructional design document will take you a long way. So that's exactly what we're diving into in this very video. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Devlin Peck and I help instructional designers like you upskill and land opportunities, which is why today we're talking about instructional design documents. Now these documents are a great way to build consensus with your team, but how I've enjoyed them is it's a really good way for you to kind of think through the learning solution that you're designing. Um, and you can think about how you're motivating people, how you are ensuring instructional alignment, how you're applying learning theory and science and principles. So whether you are um, trying to become an instructional designer and you want to kind of think through this stuff for the first time, or you've been doing this for years and you're looking for a way to be more intentional and uh, build consensus more effectively with your team, instructional design documents can help you get there. So what even is an instructional design document? You also may hear this referred to as a detailed design document. It's essentially an overview of your learning program that you'll create before you build it. Okay, and, and of course, in this video, we'll dive into what that actually entails. But benefits are it builds consensus with the team, it keeps everyone on the same page, and it guides all of your ensuing design efforts. So it basically says, here's what we're going to do, here's the goal we want to achieve, here's how we're going to do that. And it gets it all in one document that you can share with all of your stakeholders. Everyone can kind of use that. If you're working on a big team, everyone can refer back to this. Um, really good way to, really good central document to, to let everyone know what they're doing. So generally speaking, it includes the overall learning goal, the learning objectives, the strategies that you'll use, uh, the background information for the project, like why do we even need this in the first place, uh, an audience analysis so we know who we're serving and more. So we're going to dive into it. Essentially, the way I like to think about it is that the instructional design document makes the case for your learning program. So it kind of says, here's why this thing should exist. Here's the approach we're using. Here's why we think this approach will be effective based on the information we have about our audience and what we know about learning theory and science and all of that good stuff. I also want to give a disclaimer here. Instructional design documents are pretty traditional. And I make this distinction, you may have heard me make this distinction in my videos, kind of like traditional instructional design, which is more like course oriented. It uses like the school model, like we're designing these information presentations to help like put knowledge into people's heads. That's what I think of as the traditional approach. And I generally see these design documents used with that traditional approach. So they're typically associated with information heavy courses. Um, from what I can tell, they're not super popular in corporate settings. So my experience with these are I created them in my master's program. Again, really good way to kind of make sure that I'm applying all of the learning science and principles and theory I was learning to these solutions. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to share that like comprehensive instructional design document approach that I learned in my master's program. But I also worked on these when I worked on government projects. So it was a bit more formal of a process. It was a bit more traditional in those settings. Um, I've, I've heard of some of I've talked to some freelancers that do use these or some version of this with corporate clients. It's not going to look exactly like what we do in this video, um, but I am going to share a streamlined approach with you at the end. So if you work in a corporate setting or if you're a freelancer and you use these regularly, let us know in the comments. I'd love to see how that lines up with what I'm going to show you here. But this is a very comprehensive approach to creating a, a design document. Um, but again, I, from what I can tell, I've never, I've never worked on these with corporate clients and, and the, the people I talk to in corporate settings seem to generally move, move more quickly than, um, move, move quicker than these documents would allow them to. I'm sure there are teams out there using them, maybe, maybe you need to for your team, but let me know in the comments if, if your corporate teams are using design documents. And I, I do want to note you can adapt this approach to make it more streamlined because again, I'm going to share a fairly comprehensive approach with you just to make sure that I mean, you'll, you'll see it's going to be good. But if you do want something that's more agile with less documentation, which I imagine a lot of you would be interested in, make sure you check out Sam and Action Mapping. Uh, Sam, I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. It just It's like no storyboarding, no design documents. It's kind of like diving right into prototyping and building consensus that way, which I think aligns more with how a lot of, uh, a lot of companies I've worked with operate. And then also action mapping. That's my favorite instructional design process. It still incorporates prototyping, um, but it's much more focused on, on practice and the actions we want people to perform. So I have videos on both of those. I'll link those in the description. Check them out if you're new to those. 
Okay, so what does an instructional design document include? Uh, the big one is the program overview. Okay, after that, we'll have some non-instructional activities. So this is more about like uh, motivation and, set and, and letting people know what the objectives are and helping them apply what they're learning afterwards. We're going to dive into all of this in more detail. And then finally, objective analysis. So these are the three components that I learned in my master's program. I kind of condensed a couple into this non-instructional activities piece, but we'll dive into each of them. And I just want to emphasize this again. The, the approach to design documents may vary, so stay tuned. I'll share a streamlined approach of what I think the essentials are at the end of this video. But if you want to dive deeper, here we go. So the program overview. So we want to include the background information and, and rationale for this learning solution in the first place. Like, why are we even even doing a learning program here? What, what's the what's the background info? Why do we need this? What's the learning goal? What are we trying to accomplish with this solution? Uh, and again, this solution may include multiple courses, multiple modules, multiple lessons. Overall, though, what is our main goal for doing this thing? And then what are our learning objectives? So the goal can be broken down into objectives. What do we need to be able to do to achieve that goal? And then those objectives can be broken down further into sub-objectives. I have a whole video on how to create, how to write learning objectives with Bloom's Taxonomy. So check that one out if you're new to objective writing. That's an important part of this. Also, any audience analysis information. So once you've conducted your needs assessment, uh, you've done some learner analysis, you've learned more about who you're serving, what their needs are, you would include some of that information here because, again, this is going to be the document that everyone refers back to to stay on the same page and, and know what's going on. Um, once again, we're getting quite a few videos on this channel, so if you want to learn more about analysis, we have a video about the five types of analysis for instructional design, and you would include some of the, the summaries of those analyses here in the design doc. Also, any prerequisites. So what do people need to do before coming into this learning program, before engaging with this solution? How are we going to deliver this solution? So will it be on mobile devices? Is it going to be on a desktop computer? Is it just going to be like printouts that we're delivering to people? And then, of course, explaining any rationale for this delivery mechanism, which will just tie back into the audience analysis. And finally, any budget and timeline info you can include here as well. So this is like a big part of the design document. I would say these bullet points you would generally want in like any design document. We want to know what we're doing and why, essentially. Um, so you could add you could add more to this. You could take some of these away, probably. But this is a pretty good solid list of of the program overview. Now, where we're going to get more deeper into this is in these next sections. So non instructional activities. I'm calling it that. It's also referred to as pre-instructional and follow-through activities. It's just not like direct instruction or practice. We'll get into that with the objective analysis. Um, I learned this in my master's program, but doing some research on it for this video, I found out it's from this um, uh, systematic design of instruction book, and this is by Dick, Carey, and Carey. So there's a book about this. This is from one of the chapters. Um, but we're generally answering these questions. This is just paraphrase. So how are you disclosing the learning goal and objective? So how are you letting people know what it is that they're going to learn? This is one of those pre-instructional activities. You want to set the stage for people without actually, and that's not actually like a learning goal. You're just like letting them know what to expect. Uh, how are you increasing learning motivation? So this is important. Again, if we're like trying to motivate people, we're not necessarily like teaching them something new, but we can incorporate strategies into our design to help people feel more motivated. And I recorded a, f a full video about this um, a few weeks back. So the ARCS model, it's one of my favorite instructional design models. It's all about how to help people feel more motivated when they're engaging with uh, a learning experience. So check that out. If you're incorporating that into your design, you would talk about that in this section of the design doc. Uh, what must the audience do before the learning program? So do they need to do anything to prepare for it? Do we have any pre-work for them before they get into the actual like instruction? Again, that's why this is, we're calling this a pre-instructional activity. And then for uh, follow-through activities, how are we facilitating review and transfer after the program? So are we giving them any like job aids? Are we scheduling any like coaching sessions or review sessions afterwards where people can continue practicing these skills? Uh, you would you would discuss these things um, in this section as well. It's not happening during the actual like instruction, but it's helping people. Um, yeah, it's helping people transfer what they're learning to the job or into the real world. 
So we could dive deeper into that. Check out that book if you want to dive deeper. But these are just, yeah, what are what are the considerations? What are the non-instructional considerations that you want to incorporate into your design that aren't directly related to one of the learning objectives? That's basically what this, this section is about. All right, so objective analysis. Now, this is where we get pretty deep. This is where you get to really put your instructional design skills to the test. And this will help you a, a lot guide your ensuing design. It will help you guide your ensuing design efforts really well, I should say. So for each of your learning objectives, you're going to basically answer these questions. So what's the objective, right? Like write the actual learning objective. And um, if, you're, if you're using a traditional approach like this, Bloom's Taxonomy is a great uh, option for this. So check out that video if you haven't already. Which instructional methods will you use to achieve this objective? So, how, so are you gonna use discussion? Is this gonna be a video? Like how are we actually helping people achieve this objective? What content is necessary to satisfy the objective? So this is where we only, yeah, what, what is the absolute necessary amount of content for people to, to be able to um, achieve that, that learning objective? And in case you're seeing a trend here, um, this really helps you keep things aligned. So alignment, very important concept as an instructional designer, if not the most important concept. We want to make sure that our objectives are aligned with our practice activities, which are aligned with the content, which is aligned with the assessment. So if, if we have some information in here that isn't directly um, aligned with an objective, there's no point in having that information and we can just kind of get rid of it. So that, that's that's where this, this process really helps, where we uh, an, analyze each of these objectives, because we'll see if, if, if the content we want to include in this experience isn't directly in support of one of these objectives, there's no reason to have that content. So it's a really good way to practice thinking as an instructional designer going through this exercise. Um, how will you engage the audience and facilitate practice? So once again, for each objective, how are people going to be able to practice with that objective before they have to actually use or, or perform that objective in the real world around the job? So you can imagine now for every single one of your objectives, if you're thinking, okay, what content do we need? How are people going to practice with this? What methods will we use to help people learn this? You're going to have a pretty comprehensive program. And then, of course, how will you assess their performance? So how will, will you assess whether or not people actually know this objective? And you can fit that assessment in, in multiple places. Um, you can also think of that as one of the non-instructional activities. It's like, how are you actually assessing whether or not people have learned? This could be tests, um, on-the-job observations. There are a, vari a variety of assessment options. Maybe we'll do a full video about that, too. I don't have one yet. But you'll want to you'll wanna consider this for each one of your objectives, um, cause you're going to, you're going to have a very comprehensive approach after that and answer these questions for each of your objectives in order. So that's a key part of this too. There may be some enabling objectives. So you'll want to think what objective are we trying to um, accomplish or satisfy first? What second, what's what third, so on and so forth. Um, so we're breezing through this. Um, again, this does get kind of in the weeds. It does get kind of comprehensive. I just wanted to give you this full scope because Going through this exercise helped me a lot when I was in my master's program. Um, so if you're a new instructional designer, it could help creating an instructional design document just to kind of wrap your head around what, what considerations instructional designers make when developing a learning program like this. But here is the streamlined approach to an instructional design document as promised. Um, I think that background info and rationale would be important just to kind of justify the existence of this learning program in the first place. You'll want to uh, include what the overall goal is, as well as what the learning and performance objectives are. So what are we trying to accomplish with this program? And what do people need to be able, what do people need to know or be able to do in order to achieve that goal? Very important. And then also, what learning strategies are we using and what solutions are we creating? So this is important as well. So what does the solution consist of and what strategies are we using to ensure that this solution is effective? These three bullet points right here, I think that's all we really need on an instructional design document. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have differing opinion, opinions on this, like I said, I've, I've made a couple of these or a few of these. Um, I don't, they don't seem super popular, but people have been asking about them. So, so we needed a video on it. <laughs> but yeah, if you have perspectives on this, let us know in the comments. I'd love to see other people's approaches to these. And then next steps, if you're watching this because you're interested in becoming an instructional designer or, you, or you've just become an ID and you're like still learning all the theory and skills and all of that, check out the full video and playlist about becoming an instructional designer. 
And then also if you've, if you've been at it for a while and you just are here to keep your skills sharp, feel free to subscribe because there is plenty more instructional design content coming your way. Um, so thanks for making it to the end with me here. I always appreciate you all who, who watch to the end. It helps. Um, and I will see you in the next video. There's plenty more to come. See you soon.